بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليم كثيرة السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته brothers and sisters how do I get to love the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم more like I know about the Prophet but how do I love him more and this is a great question because we live in a world where people love football stars, movie stars, there's all these influencers online and so on. But we forget about the Prophet ﷺ. In general, the Muslim, he will say like, of course, I love the Prophet ﷺ. But how can you love someone you do not know? So I wanted to share this hadith with you because a lot of people say like, how was the Prophet ﷺ? We hear all these stories, but... Give us something, like how do we know how he was? Well, obviously you have to read the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ. That's why knowledge is so important. Actually, knowledge of the Prophet ﷺ is from aqidah. It is from our core belief. So in the chapter of that's what's narrated on the humbleness, the tawadi of the Prophet ﷺ, hadith number seven that I wanted to read, Imam Tirmidhi, reports this hadith, hadith number seven. It's a longer hadith, subhanAllah, but it's, it's just so comprehensive. So Hassan ibn Ali, radiallahu anh, reports that I asked my maternal uncle, Hind um, bint Abi Halab, who usually describe particulars and conditions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So we see some sahabas and some people would have attention to detail. They'll pay attention to detail. So it is known that Hind would basically pay attention to these details. Now, so I was longing to hear something about it. On my asking, he described the Mubarak features of Rasulullah Wasallam. He said the Prophet Wasallam had great qualities and attributes in him. Others also held him in high esteem. So people respected the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. His face glittered like the full moon. So now we have physical description. Meaning he was handsome. So sadly, brothers don't take care of their appearance. Brothers do not take care of their appearance. His face was glittered like the full moon. He then described the complete features of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And as we mentioned in the first chapter, under hadith number seven, Anyway, Al-Hassan radiallahu says, I did not mention this hadith due to some reason to Hussein for some time. Okay, Al-Hassan was Hussein. Brothers, right? Then I once narrated to him whereupon I found that he had heard it before me. SubhanAllah, look at that. <laughs> it's so cute. He had asked him, our uncle already, what I've asked. So look how keen they were to know the Prophet Because they grew up, obviously, and as children, even though they were with the Prophet they wanted to know more. You know, sometimes you forget. You remember it's attached to your personality, but you, re you sometimes forget certain details. So it's nice to remember. Like us, right? We ask about our grandparents and our forefathers. And it's beautiful to hear this from our parents. So he said, I also found that he had asked our father, Ali radiallahu an, about Rasulullah entering and coming out of his house. Now we get from the physical features to his behavior. He did not leave out anything about the ways of the manners of the Prophet ﷺ. So Hussein radiallahu says, I asked my father regarding the manner in which the Prophet ﷺ entered the house. He replied that he entered the house. Um, he distributed his time into three portions. All right. He spent a portion for Allah, praying, performing salah and so on, devotions, a portion towards his family. Okay, fulfilling their duties, whatever, laughing, speaking, inquiring about the wives, talking and so on, and a portion for himself resting a lot of women ask oh man they come home they don't do anything this and that okay so take it from the prophet sallallahu i said this in my videos before it's not about the quantity don't expect your husband to come home and oh i left half of the dishes for you oh but the prophet used to mend his clothes yes but how many times yes he did sometimes no doubt he used to have this behavior but you know that's like something for that he had to do. But sometimes people misquote these ahadith and they try to use it in their way. 
Of course, men are always accused of misquoting these hadith. So let us look at context. I always, and the issues that I have with some of these so-called talk shows of sisters and when sisters come to demand their, their rights, there's no problem with demanding your rights or trying to get your rights because those are your rights. What I'm saying is though, when you go to an extreme now, it's a reactionary movement and now you're infringing upon the rights of men. So I always say, let's call for education for context. When you tell me Aisha did this and Khadija said this, I say, I accept. Let us look at the hadith in fully and understand the context to actually see if you're making a point or you're just picking and choosing. Anyway, let us go back. So a portion in devotion. So he would pray. He would focus on his spirituality. Then a portion for himself. He would actually rest and take things, you know, carefully for himself and a portion for his family. So a third and we find this atholoth even about eating, atholoth for this. It's, it's a beautiful principle. Now, then he says, he distributed his personal portion in two. Look at that. Now it goes into a more of a division. So for women and men, this hadith to understand how a man should be in his house. One for himself and one for the people in such a manner that the near ones among the Sahaba used to come to visit him. Though these Sahaba, radiallahu anhu, he conveyed messages to all the people, like he taught them. Now, you don't see here that his wives objecting, oh my God, your friends are coming over. Yeah, if you're just wasting time, then it's a different story. But if you have something you're teaching, you're you know bringing people over to learn, to this and that, this is very, very important. And also sometimes just to socialize. The Prophet would socialize with the Sahaba, and there was benefit in that, inshallah. He did not conceal anything from them, from the portion of the... Um, you know, um, he, he basically, he gave preference to the uh, Ahl Fadl, the people of Ilm and Amal, the people of Ilm and Amal, you know, that would benefit the Ummah. He distributed his time according to their religious Fadl or their skills. So the Prophet was very smart in the way he distributed his time. Now, Rasul fulfilled all the requirements. He busied them in things that benefited them and the entire ummah. When they questioned Rasul on a religious matter, he replied to them in a matter that benefited them. He used to say, those that are present should inform those that are not present regarding these beneficial necessary matters. He also used to say the people who, for some reason, whatever it was, they couldn't come forward, the requirements, you should inform me about the requirements because the person who informs a king for the need of another who is unable to put forward a need, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will keep that person steadfast on the day of Qiyamah. Very beautiful. Only important beneficial matters were discussed in these gatherings. He happily listened to these matters of the Sahaba radiallahu anh. Beside this, there was no wasteful or non-beneficial talks in his assembly. Okay? Um, again, wasteful, non-beneficial, we have to be careful, right? Is sometimes joking or just talking. The Prophet and did that and they remembered jahiliyyah. There was a purpose. Okay? Socializing is also important. The Sahaba radiallahu anh, came to the assemblies of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Hey, by the way, no shisha and no playing cards and just messing around. For their religious needs, and they did not depart before tasting something, okay, acquiring some knowledge. Um, with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he offered them whatever he offered them. He offered in humbleness. Uh, whenever close friends gather, whenever it was whatever, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam served people. The Sahaba radiallahu anh, returned from his assemblies as torchbearers of Hidayah and goodness. That's why I question whether people actually, when you say something, when you preach, what's the objective of what you are doing? Do you inspire people or is it jokes for laughing? Ha, 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 this funny, that funny, people are laughing. But the thing is, do people feel inspired or entertained? That's all I'm asking. Do people feel inspired or entertained? Please pay attention. The Sahaba radiallahu anh, came, right? So they left like torches. Like torches, subhanAllah. Now, torch bearers of hidayah and goodness. Regarding the coming out of the Prophet ﷺ from the house, he replied, Rasulullah sallam controlled his tongue and only spoke that which was necessary. He did not waste his time in useless conversations. He made those who came to visit him feel at home and he did not make them feel scared or, or ill at ease. When advising them, he did not scold them in a manner that they had become scared or tell them such things that would keep them away from the deen. Right? So he was very wise in the way he would approach. And we definitely all have to take. And I acknowledge also that I have to sometimes, you know, cool down. <laughs> 
Okay, I, I understand. I accept. And I've been advised by some brothers like Sheikh McCarthy and others. May Allah bless him. Uh, Sheikh Shadi and others. He respected honor and respected one's um, everything. You know, he also cho chose a leader from them. He warned the people of Allah's punishment. He also protected himself from troubling or harming others. He would not harm others. Besides being cautious and commanding others to be cautious, he never lacked in courtesy towards others. So he was very courteous. He was very, he had muruah, he had chivalry. What I've discussed this in my previous videos, you know, that sometimes is missing from some of us. May Allah forgive us. Chivalry, you know, being a knight of knowledge and of manhood. He was concerned for the affair of his friends, made himself aware about the relations between them, and rectified their faults. He was a counselor. The Prophet was the ultimate counselor, and he cared about people's affairs. Okay, a leader cares about his people, about the ummah. Some people today are like, no, I don't have to worry about these people here and those people there in this country and that country. No, it's not my business. I have to worry about my own self. No, that is a very, very narrow way of looking or what we call Islam worldview. He praised the good deeds and encouraged them. He explained to the harmful effects of bad things and removed and stopped them and stopped them and removed them. He followed the middle path in all matters and that's not liberalism or what people think is like balance no it was the correct balance according to quran and sunnah okay he did not neglect the guiding of people and they became unmindful of the religious duty sometimes or exceeded in a matter resulting in them becoming disheartened for everything there was a special arrangement he did not fall back in truth nor did he exceed the limits in this subhanallah those who attend his gatherings were the best people the best person in the eyes of Sayyidina Rasulullah was one who wished everybody well. The one with the highest status in the eyes of Sayyidina Rasulullah was the person who considered comfort and help the creation the most. Imam, uh, Imam, uh, Imam Hussein says, I then inquired from him regarding the assemblies of Sayyidina Rasulullah He began and ended all his sittings with dhikr or with remembrance of Allah. When he went to a place, he said where he found the place and also instructed the people to do so. They should not leap over people, heads or go ahead. In a different matter, there were where it's like the Prophet uh, sat, that place became the focal point of gathering. So it didn't matter where he sat, just people would focus on him because of what he said and what he did. Now, um, he talked showing happiness, okay, people were fulfilled by him, and everyone would think that the Prophet is honoring him the most. Panelist. That was like, I mean, he was such a genius when it comes to how to deal with people. The Prophet ﷺ would remain seated, would remain seated until that person began to stand up. Okay, there's the issue of adab here, mashallah. And whenever one asked him for something, he kindly fulfilled the request and did not refuse it. He would give a soft and humble answer if he did not have a, or possess the way to do it. The whole creation was equal before him as far as the rights were concerned. His gatherings were the gatherings of knowledge, modesty, patience, and honesty. Voices were not raised, nor was anyone degraded or, dis or disgraced. If anyone committed a fault, it was main, it was not made known just like publicly. All were regarded as equals amongst them. The virtues of one over the other was according to their taqwa, to their piety. The small ones were loved, I mean the children, subhanAllah. The needy were given preference, subhanAllah. And the strangers and travelers were cared for. Beautiful, beautiful hadith. Take this in context. Of course, the Prophet ﷺ did stand for truth and did... Uh, opposed the Quraysh and did oppose Beda and Shirk and evil deeds. So don't sometimes misunderstand what this is a general assembly of the Prophet and with the Sahaba, with his beloved ones, not in when someone went out of line and caused issues for the deen and so on. So we don't misunderstand, inshallah. When we look at the Prophet to understand, we need to look comprehensively at his life because people do pick and choose. Oh, the Prophet was just kind. No, he was also hard sometimes. Oh, the Prophet was just hard. No, he was also kind sometimes. This is the balance of the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. May Allah forgive us all for our mistakes and help us to get closer to this. He was a lion on the battlefield. He was, you know, at night the best worshiper. He was a kind father and husband and and you know leader. But he was firm, and when he had to put his foot down, he put his foot down. This is what we're missing. People are just giving one or the other. No. Comprehensive is, inshallah. Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.